And welcome, welcome to another class, a Sunday school lesson that we have here at Kinichonama Lutheran Church. My name is Teacher Grace and I will be with you this week. And uh, before we start anything, let's start with a word of prayer, then we will see what we'll be learning today. Okay. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your love and your kindness. Thank you for this week that you've protected us, you've given us good health, you've enabled us to be alive. God, we come before you asking you to forgive us all our sins that we've done and we ask you as we learn your word to teach us and make it easy for us to understand so that we may learn it and uh, use it in our daily lives. In the name of Jesus Christ, we have prayed. Amen. Amen and amen. As always, please make sure that you have your notebook, your pen, and your Bible, and you call your sisters, your friends, uh, and you're all seated and ready to learn the Word of God. Now, I hope you're excited to learn about this week's lesson because it is a bit of a continuation of what we learned last week. Um, the previous week, we learned about Abraham getting the promised son, who is Isaac. Last week, we learned about um, Jacob being blessed by Isaac, who was the baby of, uh, or the son of Abraham. And this week, we will continue with the story of Jacob. But this week, we're not just going to be talking about Jacob on his own, but we're going to be talking about Jacob and his son, his brother, rather, sorry, Jacob and his brother Esau, Okay. So we're going to be talking about two people today. But before we go into the Bible lesson, I want us to go through the memory verse because that will give us sort of a gist of what we're talking about today. Okay, so the heading today is um, Esau forgives Jacob, but, but I'm not going to give away how that happens. We're going to start with the memory verse. Now the memory verse this week comes from the book of Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12. If you have your Bible, please open with me to the book of Romans chapter 12. Uh, Romans is in the New Testament again. Uh, it's not in the Old Testament, but it's in the New Testament. And it is Romans chapter 12, verse 14. It's a really short verse today, and I hope we'll be able to manage and, and um, memorize it really quick. But it's really easy, and it's super important. So let us read it from Romans chapter 12, verse 14. I'll read it before you, and you have it on your screen, so we'll read it together loudly, guys. Make sure you're reading it really loud, okay? Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. That's it. So we're going to read it again. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Bless those who persecute you. Persecute you. Bless and do not curse. That's it. So there are a few big words here. Persecute. What does persecute mean? Persecute means hurting or disturbing a person that uh, persecute when a person persecutes you it means they give you pain or they hurt you in any way and people persecute us every single day some people say bad words to us some people bully us some people beat us some people you know do bad things all that is persecution okay so the bible memory verse today is saying Bless those who persecute you. Now, in a normal case scenario, when you're when a person beats you or does something bad to you, you don't want to do good to them. You don't want to bless them. You don't want to give them something good, right? You want to fight back. You want to hurt them too, isn't it? But the Bible says we're supposed to bless them. People who persecute us, people who hurt us, we are supposed to bless them, okay? And then bless and do not curse. God does not want to curse. And you'll also want to know what is the meaning of curse. Cursing is saying bad things to happen to somebody else. So say, for example, a person beat me and you say, I curse you. And when you walk, you will fall down and get hurt or wishing bad things for other people. So the Bible is telling us to not um, wish bad things, even to people who are hurting us. Now, in the world today, that is really, really um, uncommon because people want to return bad for bad, um, evil to evil, right? But the Bible, which is our guide, which is what God wants us to do, which is what even Jesus himself did. Remember when he was on the cross, the people were beating him up. He wanted to hurt him. They, you know, even killed him. 
but Jesus forgave them. And that is what we'll be looking into today. Forgiveness and repaying good for evil. Now, this week's uh, scripture passage, we're going to continue. As I mentioned before, we, we are uh, still reviewing the story of um, um, Esau and Jacob. And uh, we're going to read from Genesis chapter 33, verse 1 to 13. But before we go into, into reading um, this week's passage, I want to give you sort of a glimpse of understanding or some background information before this chapter. So we see that last week we learned that um, the blessings of Esau had gone to Jacob, right? And Jacob was a little bit afraid at the beginning, but later on he went on with the plan with the mom had planned, right? So the blessings did go to Jacob. However, when Esau came back and found out that his blessings, that he so he went to his father with the game that he had prepared, and then um, Isaac was really, really shocked that who are you? I had already given blessings. I thought it was you. But when Esau realized that Jacob had taken his blessings, he was so angry. He was so, so, so angry. And because he was super angry, he said, you know what? When my father dies, I am going to kill Jacob. He was that mad. He was so mad that he also wanted to kill so when Sarah, uh, when uh, sorry, when Rebecca heard this, she was afraid for Jacob and said, "You know what, Jacob, you must leave. You must go to my cousin um, Laban in a different land, and you must stay there. Otherwise, your brother will be so angry he might kill you." And because um, because Jacob was also really afraid, he left. He left his father's home. He left his mom. He left everything, and he just went. And he went to Laban's house. Laban was the cousin of um, his mom, um, uh, Rebecca. So he, Laban is his uncle. So he stayed with his uncle. And his uncle also gave him a job to do. He's like, you know what? I'm going to pay you for all the labor that you're going to do. So he married Leah. He later on married um, uh, Rachel. And he lived in Laban's house for a long time. But you see, God had already blessed Laban. I mean, he had already blessed uh, Jacob. Remember um, the promises that we learned uh, last week? So we see that, uh, what's his name? Jacob was already super blessed by God. So whatever he touched was blessed. So he was going to take care of the flock and they were blessed. All the cattle that he was tending to was blessed. So after some time, he had created a lot of wealth for himself because they multiplied and multiplied and he had so many cattle right so he was rich now you know whatever happens when good things happen right the sons of laban started to become jealous and they're like well this guy is getting all this wealth because of our father if it wasn't for our father this person would not be rich they started being jealous mm -hmm. the green-eyed monster so when he heard this he was not happy and then god told jacob you know what he said you know what this is a long time now, from the time that he had stolen the blessing from, to the time that he's super blessed. This is a long, many years has come. Uh, they had children of their own, a long, long time. God told him now to return to his father's house. Now, remember how he left. He had stolen his brother's blessings, and now he's told to go back. Now, yes, God told him to go back, but he was scared. Just like sometimes God tells us to do something, but we're really, really scared. So he leaves, but before going, he needs to prepare. And he's like, okay, I remember my brother said that he's going to kill me. When my father dies, he's going to kill me because I took his blessings. Now, what am I going to do? So he starts preparing to go. And this is what he does. First, he sends... Um, servants his servants and says you know what go ahead of me and go to Esau and tell him he, your servant is coming and is asking you to find favor before him and so he goes the servants go and tell um, Esau 
But the servants come back to Jacob and tell him, you know what? Your brother is coming. But he's not coming alone, Esau. He's coming with 400 men. That is a lot of people. So when Jacob heard this, he was scared even more. He's like, oh, surely he's going to kill me. He's coming back. He's coming to me with 400 men. He's going to take my people. He's going to hurt my family. Because at that time, he had two wives. So what he said, he said, what, what am I going to do? He was so, so afraid. And so he prayed and he said, he reminded God his blessings. He said, God, you promised me. You promised me that you were going to bless me. You promised me that you're going to make my descendants as many as the stars in the sky and the sand in the ocean. You promised God, please protect me from my brother. Because he knew that um, uh, Esau had promised that he's going he's gonna to hurt him. So he said, God help me. He prayed. And so he said, okay, I need you. He, will, he would go towards his brother. But he would divide the, um, the group in groups of three. He took his servants and he made three groups. Okay, so I'm going to use this as an example. He used this group one, group two, and group three. So they were going, let's do it this way. So this is where Esau is and this is where Jacob is. So he's sending three batches. So the first servants went with so many flocks and gifts. And then he said, your servant giving, is giving you these uh, gifts. This is now the message that um, Jacob was telling the servants to go and tell Esau. Okay, so let's follow this. He's saying, your servant is giving you these gifts and I hope that he will find favor in your face. So the first servant goes with all the cattle and the sheep as a gift to Esau. And then the second one goes and he says, um, I hope these will be a gift to you and we want to um, accept it as a blessing as your servant, uh, Jacob, is behind us and he's coming. So the second one also goes. And then also the third one, okay? This is all because he had become really, really rich, okay? So he had those three sets of servants going to give Esau the gifts first. And then this, this, the distance that we're talking about is not like here and here. It's a long, long distance, probably days time of walking. So he's walk, they went and presented those gifts. So before they, they even returned, Jacob was at the back and then he prayed again and he also slept. And there he had a chance to interact with God. And then he asked God to bless him and God blessed him, yeah? And then this is all in, in the way to meet Esau. But Esau is also, I mean, uh, Jacob is still afraid because he doesn't know how Esau will react, okay? He does not know how he will behave because he was so mad last time, okay? So he, we find that uh, Jacob is now heading towards meeting Esau. Are you guys ready to know what happens, which is this week's lesson? So we're going to read now. We're going to read from the book of Genesis. Okay. We're going to read from the book of Genesis. Open your Bibles. We're done with the New Testament. Now we're going into the Old Testament. Um, Genesis chapter 33, verse 1 to 17. Okay. Genesis chapter 33, verse uh, 1 to 17. The, the story I told you before is so that you know what happened um, in the life of Jacob until we get to this point today. So I hope you're excited to find out what happens when they actually meet. Okay? Um, Genesis chapter 33, verse 1 to 17. I will read it, but you have it on your screen. Please make sure that you read it as well. So, Jacob looked up and there was Esau coming with his 400 men. So he divided the children among Leah, Rachel, and the two female servants. He put the female servants and their children in front, Leah and her children next, and Rachel and Joseph in the rear. 
He himself went on ahead and bowed down to the ground seven times as he approached his brother. But Esau ran to, ran to meet Jacob and embraced him. He threw his arms around his neck and kissed him, and they wept. Then Esau looked up and saw the women and children. Who are these with you, he asked. Jacob answered, they are the children God has graciously given your servant. Then the female servants and their children approached and bowed down. Next, Leah and her children came and bowed down. Last of all, last of all came Joseph and Rachel, and they too bowed down. Esau asked, what is the meaning of all these flock and herds I met? To find favor in your eyes, my lord, he said. But Esau said, I already have plenty, my brother. Keep what you have for yourself. No, please, said jo Jacob. If I have found favor in your eyes, accept this gift from me. For if to see your, for to see your face is like, to, like seeing the face of God. Now that you have received me favorably, please accept my pre the present that was brought to you. For God has been gracious to me and I have all I need. And because Jacob insisted, Esau accepted it. Then Esau said, let us be on our way. I'll accompany you. But Jacob said, my Lord knows that the children, said to him, my Lord knows that the children are tender and that I must care for the ewes and the cows that are, that are nursing their young. If they are driven hard, just one day, all these animals will die. So let my Lord go on ahead of his servants, servant while I move along slowly at the pace of the flocks and the herds before me and, place, uh, and the pace of the children until I come to my Lord in Seir. Esau said, then let me leave you some of my men with you. But why do that? Jacob asked. Just let me find favor in your eyes, my Lord, and the eyes of my Lord. So that uh, Esau started on his way back to Seir. Jacob, however, went to Succoth, where he built a place for him, for himself, and made shelters for his livestock. So this story is really exciting. Esau was super angry years ago because Jacob had taken his promise. And now they're meeting for the first time in years. You can imagine what is going through the mind of um, Jacob. He's like, he wanted to kill me. He's so angry. He's met, be st still angry up till now. And so what he decided to do, he made, uh, he distributed his family because he was really, really big. So what he did, he put um, two servants, two female servants. So there was female servant one, female servant two, and children. Female servant one with, his, with, with children, female servant two with children, Leah with children, and Rebecca with children. And they were all going towards um, Asa. Remember from the beginning? So the first servant with the, with, the, with the cattle and all the blessings went, the second one, the third one, and then it was Jacob. And then behind Jacob was the first female servant, the second female servant, Leah with the children, and Rachel with the children. Okay, And the reason why he distributed it like this is because he was afraid that the brother would attack him. And because he was afraid, he didn't want all of them to be attacked at the same time. So he put them into groups so that just in case Esau would choose to attack one group, the others can run and flee for their lives. But lo and behold, it was completely different from what he was expecting. Why? Because God had fulfilled the promise of protection to protect him from Esau. So they're seeing each other face to face. Esau is on one side. Jacob and his entire family and all his riches are on the other on another side. And they and we see from the very first verses, Jacob is looking up, and Esau saw him. They're looking at each other face to face. What happens then? Immediately, when he had already divided them, um, Jacob 
is going towards Esau, but he's bowing down seven times. He's going and then he's bowing down again. And then he's going and he's bowing down seven times. And then when they meet, Esau did not try to kill him. He was not taking any weapon. He hugged him. He embraced him. He kissed his brother and they looked at each other and they both started crying. They were crying because they had missed each other for such a long time, but they also were crying because there's so many emotions happening at the time. So they cried and they, 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 we see that they still had love for each other and Esau still loved his brother, um, Jacob, and they hugged him. They hugged each other. And then is when Jacob knew that, Oh, thank God he's forgiven me. And I'm not, I get in trouble with my brother Esau. And then Esau now is looking. Remember, when Jacob left the land, he was just alone. He was just one man with a staff. He didn't have anything. He was just one person. But he's coming back with a crowd, you know, maid servants, two wives, lots of um, uh, cattle and sheep and all these blessings. Remember? last week's memory verse that god would give him riches indeed god gave him riches because he had so much and then now esau is asking who are these people and he said these are the children that god has given me these are the things that god has blessed me with just like god had promised this is the wife and these are the children that God has given me. And, and all these cattle. And he's, what about all the cattle that came before me that was given to me? He's like, yes, these are gifts to you because God has blessed me. But Esau is like, you know what? God has blessed me too. He's given me all so much wealth. It's also you just keep your things. You keep them for yourself and your family. But um, J uh, Jacob is saying, you know what? For me to believe that you've truly forgiven me and that you've really accepted my, my, my apology, please accept these. Please accept them as my way to say I'm sorry and, and, you, and, my, and your way to say that you've forgiven me. And please just take it so that you're a blessing. He's like, okay, okay, because he insisted so much. He said, fine, I'll take this cattle. And then Lasso is like, okay, guys, let's go now. Let's go home. All that shows that truly, truly, Esau had truly forgiven Jacob and they were going back to the land of their fathers. But because they were, they had some young cattle that were not able to go so quick. So Jacob asked him, you know what, you just go, I'll come again ahead. Uh, I'll come behind you slowly because I have some cattle that are still nursing the babies. And if you go too fast, they'll all die. So he's like, okay, um, then I'll go ahead with you. And we see that Esau goes to Seir and Jacob goes to Sukkoth. Now, what are we learning from this um, experience? And the memory verse this week said, says that we should not, uh, we should bless our persecutors, the people who hurt us. Esau was hurt because Jacob had taken the blessing. Yes, God had already planned for it, but he was hurt about it and he was really, really angry. And at that time, he was ready to even kill his brother. What are we learning today? Not everybody will treat us fairly. Not all the time that people will be kind to us and love us. But what do we do in, you know, in return? Do we hate them? Do we beat them? Or do we try to get back at them? The word of God today teaches us that we should not get back to them. God himself is the one who is going to um, fight for us. And he's the one who's going to help us. You see, um, Esau was also blessed. He also had so much. Yeah. But maybe if he had gone and followed um, Jacob, maybe he wouldn't be blessed as well. So God wants us to trust him to fight for us. Even when people treat us unfairly, we should go to him in prayer, trust him, and he will be the one to help us through. And let us not try to do things our own way. And that's the most important thing. We should pray, but also tell, of course, authorities, if it's your parent, if it's your teacher, tell them. But we should never try to take things in our own hands. Why? Because when we choose to do things in our own um, way meaning fight or do anything 
um, to, to hurt the other people, we also sin against God. And when we sin against God, God will not fight for us because we will have taken his role or his power to fight for us in that situation. So when somebody treats you unfairly, first pray about it. Pray and then tell uh, a parent and then they will be able to, to assist. But God is the one who will be fighting for you. And that is why praying is very, very important. And as the memory verse says, bless them. Blessing means do good to them. And I know it's hard. Trust me. I know it is super hard to do something good to people who do bad things to you. But the good thing is that we're not doing it only ourselves. We have a helper who is the Holy Spirit. When we ask the Holy Spirit to help us to do good to people, even those who do bad things to us, he is able to do it. And when we do that, God is pleased with us. And when he's pleased with us, he blesses us. Yeah, he blesses us and he fights for us. So are you forgiving? Do you forgive people who are offending you? Or are you one of those people, well, if somebody did it, I'm going to revenge, revenge, revenge. And the Bible says, vengeance is for the Lord. God revenges for us. We don't need to revenge on ourselves because when we revenge on ourselves, we become sinners. But he revenges for us. And we see that when, with, with forgiveness, Esau forgave um, Jacob and he was also blessed. So when we uh, forgive others, God also forgives us. Remember the Lord's Prayer? Forgive us as we forgive those who sin against us. So when we forgive, that is when God forgives us too. We want to be forgiven, isn't it? Sometimes when we do something bad, we're like, but why don't you just forgive me? You know, I just said, sorry, forgive me. We want to be forgiven, isn't it? Just as we want to be forgiven, let us also forgive others. I really, really hope that you will hold this truth into your heart, that we'll forgive others other people because god our father forgives us now i'll tell you another thing sometimes just like jacob you might feel so guilty because of what you've done and you might think that god will not be able to forgive me because of this big sin that i've done let me tell you today there is no sin that god will not forgive only you need to go to him in truth and in spirit and say god i have sinned i need you to forgive me and God will forgive you. He uses the life of Esau to show us how he forgives us. And that is why Jesus came and died on the cross so he can forgive our sins. Now I'll ask you today, do you want God to forgive your sin? What are you holding on to today? What sin are you holding on to and saying, oh, well, you know, God can forgive me for small things, but this one, God is too big for God to forgive. There is nothing for, too big for God to forgive. What are you holding on to that you do not want to let go to God because you think he don't won't forgive you? I am telling you today, he will definitely, definitely forgive you. So just ask God to forgive you. So let us pray and ask God to forgive us for all of our sins, but also help us to pray to forgive others um, who sin against us. So let us pray. Lord, Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. Thank you for teaching us the importance of forgiving um, other people. We ask you to help us to forgive because in ourselves we're not able to forgive. But through the work of the Holy Spirit, we are able to forgive. We ask you also to forgive us for all the bad things that we have done. We ask you to make us clean and holy, just like you are. In the name of Jesus, amen and amen. Guys, if you said that prayer with me and you really meant it in your heart, all your sins have been forgiven and God has forgiven you. And I hope that you also forgive others. Now, let us see if we have uh understood today's lesson so i'm going to ask you a few questions and i want you to answer at home loudly and clearly okay so make make sure that you're listening so who was um who was the father of jacob and esau do you remember do you remember i said it at the beginning who was the father of jacob and esau think about it think about it and if you said Isaac, you're absolutely right. The father of Esau and Jacob was Isaac, correct? Um, and we learned about these two people. And Esau forgave someone. Hmm, who did he forgive? 
I'm giving you another minute. Think about it, think about it. Aha, uh -huh. if you said he forgave Jacob, you're absolutely right. Yes, he forgave Jacob. So, another thing. Jacob went before God um, to pray that his brother would forgive him. But what did he give to his brother as a way to say he's sorry? What did he give him? Let's remember, let's remember, he gave him uh, a flock, he gave him cattle, he gave him sheep, he gave him so many blessings as well. Okay, you're right. And the last question that I want you to, not to answer me, but I want you to tell your friend at school, okay? A friend at school, just one, not many. I want you to be able to tell him or her what you've learned this week. I want you to tell them this story and then I want you to also tell them the importance of forgiveness. I hope you guys had a great time today and I really, really hope that you will forgive your friends and most importantly, always go to God for forgiveness. I hope you have a wonderful week. Never forget to wash your hands and make sure you're safe. God bless you and have a wonderful week.